myself. Uh, my name's Ronnie Cowan, and I'm an activist. Many more folk, some who are in this hall this evening, have contributed to Yes Inverclyde. However, by accident, as much as by design, uh, we cover most, if uh, not all, of the subsets of the local uh, demographs. So the format for this evening is that I shall talk, then hopefully you shall talk, and very importantly during that stage, we shall do a lot of listening. When you talk, we want ideas. You come to these events and sometimes people want to grandstand, they want to tell us everything about themselves, and, but what we really want is ideas that you can contribute to the ongoing process of the Yes campaign. I would ask you to mind your P's and Q's because we are being live streamed around the globe as we speak. Very briefly, when I was canvassing during the referendum, I knocked a door and it wasn't too far from here actually and the chap that answered it didn't really want to talk. It was a usual, here we are on a scale of 1 to 10, where 1's a no, 10's a yes, where are you? And he wasn't that interested. His basic reply was, this town is shit, it always has been, and it always will be. And I was pretty sad at that attitude, and unfortunately it wasn't too uncommon among an older generation of men who had grown up in this town, guys who knew the shipyards in their heyday, they knew the jobs, they knew the lifestyle, and they knew that supported their families. But within a generation, all of that had been ripped away from them. My late father had a pub up in Grovener Street in Ann Street. Uh, uh, I called it Grovener up in Ann Street. As a wee boy in the 60s, uh, I was in that shop a lot and it was full of hard drinking men who worked very hard as well. And we took away the hard work and we left a huge gaping empty void which has never been replaced. However, back at my canvas, the chap that opened the door to me that night couldn't have been any more than 18 years of age. And that made his response all the sadder, and it made me all the anger. But strangely, that incident to me crystallised what I believed the whole Yes campaign was about. Yes, it was about self-determination. Yes, it was about country and identity. But it was really about the possibilities of what we can do within that country we wanted to create. The new opportunities and the new belief. But we voted, and we lost. Which for a short period, sort of killed one of my recurring themes. During the referendum campaign, if any of you were involved with me, you'd have known on a number of occasions I told everybody, this is just step one. Independence is step one. Step two will be to create a country that we want, a country that reflects the hopes of the citizens. Well, what we have now, following a no vote, is the same aim, but the process is now in reverse. If we continue to work to create a country that reflects the hopes of its citizens, a country where people are empowered, a country with communities that are strong and robust and visionary, a country where your vote counts and your politicians are representative of your community, then that country with its newfound confidence, empowerment, belief, inevitably that country will have the courage to become independent. The hunger for independence still exists. Well, that's why the Yes campaign continues after the no vote. We hear now in a poll taken just last week that if we held the referendum now, we would win. That, I'm afraid, to all of us is small comfort. Okay, my proposal, and then a, a proposal to you, and a question to you. Across Inverclyde, there are community councils and Taras, and there's lots of more formal groups, less formal groups than those. I want, I want to get to know the people involved in those communities, because the more people involved in these community activities that happen to be yes voters, then the better. I'm not suggesting you attend your community council or your local uh, PTA or whatever and go in there preaching independence. I am suggesting that you get involved in all those communities and wear a yes badge. That will start the conversation and that will actually be part of you or part of the campaign and you contributing to the campaign in a very subtle 
an ongoing manner. If one in a hundred of the 1.6 million people who voted yes contributed positively to local campaigns and wore their yes badge, that's a collective of 16,000 people. All being proactive, all leading by example, all contributing to the common good. So the point I'm making is that not all our efforts have to go into activities that are directly related to independence. By getting active in your community, you will be contributing. So my question to you is this. How do we create a society that embraces the idea of community? One where individuals are empowered and are courageous. Because that now is our path towards independence. So I'm going to hold the put the floor over to you guys. We've only got this one microphone. We're going to run out and give it to you. When the microphone comes to you, the rule is very simple. Stop. And then talk. It gives us time to get the cameras and the sound up for you as well. Don't rush into it, okay? So, hands up, and I'm really genuinely looking for the ideas you've got that you and your community can get involved to carry this forward. Hi, good evening, everybody. Um, those of you who don't know me, my name's Stuart Gunn from Gurok. And my story at the referendum was one which brought my close family together. Brought my son, my daughter, mother daughter in Aberdeen. And the united front we had in that family, we wanted independence. Okay? I was gutted. 19th tears. Even seeing it now, the passion I still feel is only going to burst into tears. My daughter, she runs a dance school. She had a party that night. We had 13, 14 year old kids who become half 12, one in the morning. We knew it was done. They're in tears. They're saying to me, why? And I still can't answer that. I still can't believe that we, from the passion that I saw in Inverclyde and the passion I saw in Glasgow, I can't believe that we actually lost the vote. But we've got to accept the result. It's how we now come together in different groups and, and move forward within Inverclyde. We've got issues. I was up to our hill with a dog and I met a woman from Glasgow and she said, I can't believe Inverclyde voted no. We've got nuclear submarines at Fast Lane. Christ, we've got to get rid of these things. We've got food banks in Inverclyde. I'm 50 years old. It's the only shop that's opened in Inverclyde. How do we collectively come together, move forward as a group? I was involved in running some of the guys during the, the campaigning, I wish I could have done more, but there's only a limit to time. But I'm not going to let it rest now. I'm going to continue. And I'll hopefully I'll see independence in my lifetime. And in Gurok, we've set up, um, it's really from the musicians. I don't, what do they call themselves again? Yeah, mad. Musicians and artists for independence. And we had some great nights down the Firth Hotel. We move forward from there. We've now set up another group called Inverclyde for Independence. I know there's other wee faction groups. Uh, eye for eye. And basically, our aim is to support whoever's going to stand for independence. We'll do all I can as a small group. We'll join up with other groups. We'll support other groups. We want to have social events. We want to bring folk together. We want to co collectively have ideas. My main worry at the moment is we've got different things happening all over the place. We're fragmented. We've got to bring this together. Now, as a group in Verclyde, we've got 200 people on our sort of Facebook page. We're running a bus to Edinburgh. We want to involve other groups. We want to come together. So I don't know if we can some if we get different groups and have committee members of these groups meeting sometime to come together. We're having there's a 45 rally, I don't know if you've seen it on the, the internet, it's at, uh, outside the Parliament building, it's on Sunday the 29th, now we've got one bus, a 53 seater that we're taking through, uh, we're half full on the second bus, uh, the plan for the day is leave Gurok about half past nine in the morning, 
go through to Edinburgh, spend the day in Edinburgh at the rally, back to Gourock. Um, it's thirteen pound a ticket. When we get back to Gourock, we've got the bands playing at night. We've got a buffet, all included in the price. It's thirteen quid. And what we really hope is we get as many folk coming on that. And it's really just a social get to know each other and a fun day out. We can go and wave the banner for Inverclyde outside the Parliament building, have some fun, come back down the road, a buffet and a social. So that's that's open. And please come and see me or any of the guys down here if you'd like to come and join us on that trip. There's some folk coming. But going back, I think we've got to collectively get Gary, Jen, Ronnie, groups together and see how we can galvanise and, and come together and go out there. Whether it's events, I'm different than these guys, I'll go flag waving, I love the, 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 the visual side of things. These guys are slightly different, they, they prefer talking to the audience, but there's still a desire, there's still a desire there within Inverclyde, a desire within the people and what I'm seeing is this ain't going away, I'm not going to let it go away. Um, and it's, I think it's great to see so many folk out tonight, and that's really stick together. Let's let's go. I'm just I was just going to momentarily uh, momentarily step in and say we had uh, agreed on a sort of um, about three minutes more or less just to make sure everybody gets their say in so you ran over a wee bit of time but we didn't want to interrupt and things but you know it's just a, it's just a yeah that's that's why she was waving <laughs> but you know you know but uh, you know it's okay it's not it's not some sort of rigid thing and stuff but just for anyone else okay Hi all, I'm Donna, I'm the Australian. I should turn around, shouldn't I? Um, okay, uh, first things is join the SNP, SSP or whatever, or Greens, whichever party is a yes supporting group. That's the first step. I've had someone ask me actually yesterday what he, feel, what he thought I would recommend because he wants to become political. He's a young man, so uh, this is what I've said to him. First, join a political party that supported the yes campaign. Second, become... Um, involved in your groups, local groups, larger groups. So I've become part of the Women for Independence, which I like because, hey, I'm a woman. But I'm also um, doing a bit of volunteer work in Edinburgh as well for a march that's going to be happening on the 5th. Yes, I'm going to be wearing a mask. So come and have a look. If you're in Edinburgh, I'll be working the cafe. So that's my bit. But what I have found is a no voter has come out of the woodwork towards me and said, I hate Alex Salmon, blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. My thought in my head was I need five points for when I hit someone like this because I need to repeat to this person what I know and what I'm confident with. So have five points that you know are relevant to Inverclyde. So when someone comes up and says, oh, I hate that Alex Salmon, well, you can turn around and say, well, if you voted no, do you feel comfortable with the fact that, A, there's food banks that are active in, in Inverclyde at this moment, B, we have problems with a with a nuclear sub base right across the road right across the river and there's I'm sure you can think of another three points that are relative to your immediate area that you can say every day to a no voter and get it through their heads that these problems are created and ongoing they're not going to change unless we change them so five solid points you can stick to you can stick on a postcard you can share your, with your community and I think that's where we can start so. I'm just going to come forward because I'm next to somebody who's a bit camera shy. Um, I, I'm Fiona Cook. I was involved in uh, Yes and Verclyde uh, via uh, Labour for Indy. Um, now I'm just for Indy because I've, I've dropped the Labour uh, party, but one of the first things I did, having been at the count um, on the 18th and to the 19th, was uh, compose an email on behalf of myself and, and my partner and, and resigned from the Labour Party. I'd been... <laughs> I think uh, between us we had a combined uh, membership of 64 years, me 29 and... Uh, and uh, Sharon 35, so it was, uh, 
it was a, to some extent it was a difficult process, but it was also an easy process because for me there was no going back. Um, it, was, it was no longer compatible for us to, to be members of the Labour Party. And, uh, you know, I, I read, uh, I think, a like a lot of you, um, I'm no longer getting my information from, from newspapers um, or the BBC. It's online, it's reading blogs and so on. And uh, I read uh, a blog the other day, uh, Labour List, um, in which the Yes movement was described as a zombie movement. I don't know if it, any you saw it by, by a guy called Peter Russell. Um, and I thought the irony, because to me, voting Labour, supporting Labour has been a zombie movement for, for years now, we've just gone blindly, certainly um, speak for, for ourselves, but you know we've gone blindly uh, to the polling booths and voted Labour and pinned our hopes on Labour and it hasn't worked. And as I said, I, d I did one of these video pieces for, for, for Yes uh, during the campaign and I said that the union hasn't served Scotland or its people and the same applies for the Labour Party. And during the, the, the campaign, the referendum campaign, they stood they stood with the unelectable and the unpalatable in the shape of the Conservatives and in some cases the Orange Order and that is not on and we have to say to them for doing that you in turn have to become unelectable so I think our focus has got to be the general election and winning winning Inverclyde that's what we do we win Inverclyde um, I have joined the SNP my parents are delighted because they've been nationalists all their lives. So we were, we were through in Jedburgh at the weekend. And of course, I got nonstop. I told you not to join the Labour Party. I told you, mum's always right. But um, um, it's like Stuart was saying, it brings fa it's brought families together. It simply brought our family together. Um, but yeah, the focus in my, in my view has got to be the general election. Um, I know we've had some great polls over the last few days, but we've been there before. You remember, you know, 10 days before the referendum, we've got our hopes up. So we've been there before, we can't take anything for granted, but Inverclyde is winnable. Um, some of you might know, but um, about 20 years ago, um, I was a Labour councillor and I got put up in what was deemed to be an unwinnable seat. It was a, a Lib Dem seat. Um, and I took the view then, no, this is not an unwinnable seat. It's about getting out, it's about speaking to people. And I went round the doors I and mean, I was in my mid twenties I'd, I'd only recently moved to Inverclyde. I didn't really know the area, but I went out and I knocked on doors and I spoke to people and those people came out and voted for me. Um, I didn't last long because um, I was a trainee solicitor at the time and it was just, they, they moved the times of the meetings to, to during the day and I, I just couldn't do it. I had to, I had to, uh, to give up. But, um, um, you know, I'm proud of that. And it, sh it just shows you, if you go out and knock on doors, you can win a seat. And if we get out and we knock on doors, we can win Inverclyde. Um, so I, I think that's really got to be um, our focus. And if we do that across the country, we can make a real difference. And sorry, I, I know I'm going to run over my three minutes. I, I once gave a speech at the Labour Party conference, and usually you get a light that comes on and you get cut off and booted off the stage. Um, but uh, yeah, if we, we work together and focus on that. But I, one of the things I would like to see us doing, because when we go out and knock on doors, what we're going to get, we saw what happened to us 10 days before the referendum, and we knew they're going to throw everything at us. They're going to, they're, they're, you know, they're going to come after us because they think we might win. And the same thing is going to happen. They will come after us. And what we'll get non-stop is Labour saying, a vote for the SNP, for the Greens, for the SSP is a vote for the Tories. And we need to combat that. We need to, and we need to be prepared. We've got knocking on doors. And I think it's like Donna said, it's about having points. So I would really like to see us doing some education, educational meetings over the next... Um, <laughs> the next few months so we're going out and we're prepared because a lot of the people I've, I've met have said I don't mind stuffing envelopes I don't mind leafleting but I, do, I, do, I can't go out canvassing I, I, I can't you know I don't feel able to do that so we need you know we need to arm people we need to make people feel confident so they can get out there and convince people and speaking to people talking to friends colleagues just keep going Stuart said we just keep going and you know we're not giving up and we're going to keep going and I, I do believe I'm actually more confident now that Scotland will be become independent. I'm more confident now than I was before the referendum. It's going to happen. Hi, I'm Kirsty Park. Well, I agree with you. You've kind of said a lot of the things that I wanted to say. The only difference is, is I've never been a Labour Party, never been a Labour supporter. 
and I'm a die-hard nationalist and I'm proud of it every minute of it. I remember, I know, no, but I'm just saying, no, but all I'm saying to you is don't let them fool you. Don't let the Labour Party fool you. They're evil beyond a joke. I was in the day I used to stand there with my children and I leafleted and I walked the to I did the SNP tote to try get money years ago. I've been in the SNP years and I would say about a year ago I had a wee falling out over something silly which I mentioned to you before which I've come to say that I was wrong which at least I can admit I was wrong. It was a bit of a religious thing but that's beside the point. But the point I'm trying to make is Labour are strong in this town. I've been at many accounts. You, you guys have probably just, you've probably just been at one account. I've been at about four or five accounts with the SNP. I've been at, uh, I stood and I was, came last and had to stand on that stage last and jeered at by the Liberals and the Labour Party during us in the 90s. But all I can say is that we have stood firm and we've never, we have always, whether we were the, we used to laugh at us, but they're not laughing at us anymore. But always remember, Labour is your enemy. He's more your enemy than the Tories. This business of, oh, I don't want the Tories in. Just turn around to them and say, you're in a worse situation. You've been worse off under the Labour. Never mind the Tories. The Tories your enemy that admits he's your enemy. Your Labour is a evil, evil. He's beyond a joke because they are the ones that say, I'm for the working class, but do not want to bend down. I actually saw a picture just before I came in, I saw a picture, and it was Alex Salmond kneeling down, giving a beggar money. And it was Ed Miliband, barely being able to touch the woman with a two pence piece. And that shows you the difference, is that the Labour Party say that they're socialists. And as my dad said, his grandfather in the 1945 chased them away from the door. And he said re two reasons why he stopped the Labour Party, and that was in the 40s, was one, they dropped the Home Rule Bill right, when they got into power. And always remember that to your people that you're talking about, about Labour. Labour say they're for you, but you turn around to them and ask them one question. Say, an SMP MP or a Labour MP, if they go down south and not go to Westminster, who can you rely on to fight tooth and nail for Scotland? They've got proof in the pudding, it's been your SMP. Your Labour go down south and they do whatever down south wants. And always remember, my great, -grand my great grandfather turned around and said, Labour, socialists, they wouldn't know a socialist if they came across it in their soup. Simple as that. Labour must die. Just very quickly on that. The last election, I think the Labour Party had a 6,000 majority. It was the, the by-election, Anne McLaughlin and, and Ian McKenzie. So yes, absolutely, we believe we want to get after this seat. A uh, couple of polls last week, one of them said that if the trend goes the way it's going, the Labour Party only returns about two MPs. Uh, we'd like to believe that. Another one said about 10 MPs. When that 10 came into the equation, Inverclyde fell back into the Labour domain. So yes, it's absolutely a target we want to go after. We believe it's winnable. We dragged the, the Yes campaign from absolutely nowhere locally to within 86 votes, which is really 44 people who voted no, saying, actually, I'm going to vote yes, and suddenly we've won it in, in our first-past-the-post election. That's all we need. So, yes, we believe it's winnable, but absolutely, Fiona, uh, Kirsty, it does work, 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 and it's knocking doors for whoever the candidate happens to be. Once we get into that stage, whoever that person is, we all have to get in there and work our socks off for them. Okay? Excuse me for no standing up, I've had a knee replacement, but uh, just a couple of points you might want to know that uh, Alex Salmon, he donates a third day's his wages to charities, whereas Murphy and Alexander, you know, have scammed the people out of over £200,000 in expenses in the last few years. You know, that's labour for you. But the, the one thing that uh, I was d really disappointed in was when I went to that uh, Hope Over Fear rally in George Square uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, a lawyer from the America came in and uh, called Naomi Wolf. Now she had done all the running to, you know, but the, the vote rigging and all that. She'd postman that said that that confirmed that the votes went south of the border, you know, to get uh, verified before they come back to, to Scotland for the count. 
she had the uh, oh, she had all sorts of information, but she handed that over to Tommy Sheridan, and Tommy Sheridan's went all quiet. He's never said a dicky word after it. He's, she says, "I'm handing this over to the Scottish people because I've done all I've done all the hard work. I'm handing this over to Tommy Sheridan, live on stage, and he's just went quiet. There's been nothing happened about it. And the the judicial the judi excuse me, I, I'm not used to talking, but uh, as you can gather, but the the judicial review that uh, we could have we could have went to, you know, you know, and went for a, a revote ended on the 30th of a uh, 30th of October. Conveniently, the Labour had their party in the, the evening of the 30th. You know, probably to cer celebrate that was that there was nothing more legally that Scotland could do. You know, if they had went for a revote through, you know, vote rigging. But anyway, I've said my bit. Hi, my name's Diane and I'm with the IFRI, the Inverclyde for Independence. I just want to follow on what Fiona was saying there about 2015. I do strongly believe the fear factor's still out there and I do believe certain people, people that's not got internet, people that read the papers, believe the papers, watch TV, believe TV. These are the people we need to speak to and we need to get rid of the fear factor, and that's where the education comes in. We need educated on the questions they're going to ask that the television's putting out, like um, the pound situation that was going on and about the EU as well. These are questions that I want answers to. I want to be able to talk to somebody about that and be confident about it. And I'd like maybe, like local businesses, I'd like to hear their stance on the EU and the European Union, how we get into that or whether we come out of it. So I can answer those questions if I speak to somebody because the BBC is going to be telling them all, oh, if you go SNP and well, this will happen, that will happen, you're going to be stuck with us. We need to be able to answer them strongly and get rid of the fear factor. And I'm really aiming that, I suppose, at the elderly. I've got three neighbours who are elderly and all voted no, and now they'd say they'd vote yes. They've changed their mind completely only because I've been blethering to them over the fence and only on subjects that I know I'm confident in talking in. So I do agree, Fiona, we need educated on strong subjects. One second. Um, hi guys, just to go on what Diane and Fiona were saying, the other day I decided to do some self-harming on the internet. So I read an interview by Blair McDougall and then um, he was reflecting on the referendum campaign and he got asked the question, when did you know that the no had won? And he might have just been talking out his backside, but he said he knew no had won when he seen all those yes voters in George Square singing and dancing and a vote hadn't even been cast apart from postal votes. And the reason that is, is I'm all for the visuals and us that worked hard at Yes Emma Clyde, we never got to go to many of the parties, but the way we beat a biased media the way we get our message across is by putting foots on the floor and knocking doors. And I think a lot of us can say we're all guilty of putting a Facebook start up and getting 10 likes and thinking we've campaigned. Well, the referendum showed that's not the case. And um, up to May, we can be Inverclyde. By we, I mean an independent supporter because I'm in the SSP. Hopefully the SNP will be open to a yes alliance and we'll campaign for them. And to get rid of Labour down here, especially with its strong, strong tradition of voting Labour, we need people knocking doors. And <clears throat> I'm all for partying in George Square and getting wrecked till early hours in the morning, but that doesn't win referendums and it doesn't win campaigns. Labour have got a strong, deep-rooted support here, and the only way we do it is by having conversations over fences, it's by knocking doors, it's by talking to people. And a reoccurring theme coming up just now is education. I'm sure in the lead-up to May, we can get some local experts, if you want to call them that, and we can have educational classes. We can discuss, we can sit down and say, how are Labour right wing? Because you'll hear people say they're red Tories. And I've seen a few Labour people say, name five policies that we've got, it's the same, same as the Conservatives. And how many people would feel comfortable right now having a heated discussion with a senior Labour politician to prove them a Tory? How many people feel comfortable getting right into deep water and discussing that? Because we can all see it. Red Tories, Red Tories, but we need to get educated on it and we need to go and knock the doors and speak to people.
Hello. Um, I'm Davy. I'm the guitar teacher around about uh, Inverclyde in the high schools here. And it was literally just to uh, sort of answer your question there. After the referendum, I felt very much the same way about the, the allegations of vote rigging and irregularities amongst various different councils. So I compiled an email and I sent an email to every local government authority in Scotland. There's 32 of them and asked them what their process was. My major concern, and I went to a Tommy Sheridan uh, meeting a couple of weeks before the referendum, and I asked him the same thing. I didn't really get a good reply. Uh, he just said that, you know, Westminster would stop at nothing to win the referendum. Everyone had to be the counting officer. And the response was basically just to sort of quote legislation at me. So I read the Scottish Referendum Act and I read some of their handouts and, you know, so bits and pieces that they had to give out to the polling stations. And after having a long, week-long discussion with them, uh, which I'm getting into a bit of trouble for, because uh, I did this during working time, so more to do uh, next week. But uh, the question, basically the biggest problem was the fact that there is no legislation regarding the sealing of ballot boxes and the transportation. It's entirely up to the individual. So in a polling station, you can be the presiding officer and you can drive it on your own, in your car, unaccompanied. Now, Inverclyde didn't do that. And I immediately got a response from Inverclyde Council. They set police vehicles to accompany all the, the ballot boxes, which is a great thing. Uh, and that decision is historic. That's something they've done for general elections, by-elections. They didn't do that. Uh -huh. It was the it was the Inverclyde Council, apparently. They've got their own workers. Was there no police vehicles following the, the cars? Right. That's the polling agency. Yeah. Sorry. The, guy, the guys that took down the boxes are the guys that uh, took down the stands are the same guys that took the boxes to the waterfront. So in effect, if a yes volunteer who was there um, followed the van down its own security that was there, that was there. If not, that was no security. Okay, that'll need to follow that up. I've got the name of the inspector, the police officer, and the person who is responsible in the council for making that decision, so I'll speak back to them. And uh, the, the point was that there are certain things that we can do on our own. Now, the reason I did this on my own is because I'm not happy that the fact that there's so many, there's 32 councils, they've all got different ways of doing this, and the majority of them don't have police accompanying the vehicles. The majority have no way of registering or logging the seals when they arrive so far. And also the fact that every polling agent that's in a polling station has the right to add their seal. Nobody did. Nobody in any of the responses I've had from all over Scotland. If I was a polling agent and I was in the polling station, which I did, I stood outside one in Straven uh, until 10 o'clock until it was then transported. You have the right to actually attach a seal to that. And that's something that we can do. What I've noticed is that there's a number of things that are concerns for me. I'm not suggesting there was any allegations of vote rigging. I just don't think the system's good enough. So what I'm doing is I'm collating this information and then I'll take it to my NP and say, oh, here's the variations. How can we make this better? But what we can do to make this better is if we're going to be polling agents, we make damn sure that when you're there, you add your seal. That way... To be honest, from all the responses, my major concerns with postal votes as opposed to the actual ballot transportation, but I thought there might be one thing that I could do in the interim. The, other, the reason I'm here tonight is because I want to get involved with Common Wheel. Um, so if there's anyone from Common Wheel here, then I'll get speaking to you. I live out in the sticks up near Port Glasgow, so I've not had a chance to speak. And is it Thomas Smith I've been speaking to? So I'm here to see you guys as well for exactly the same reason. That's right, aye, you get back to me. Good evening, my name is Ian McDougall from Business for Scotland. I, like the rest of you, on uh, the 19th of September I was devastated, uh, but we can't get away from the fact that we did lose. We got 45% as opposed to the other side who got 55%. Uh, and the reality is, is that to win another independence referendum or to ultimately gain more powers for Scotland, we have to bring over some of the 55 over to our side and over to our side of the argument. And that is the reality here. And 
I know we'd like, I think we need to reach out. I know some of us would like to throttle some of them uh, because we can't quite understand why they did it. Uh, but the reality is, is we have to reach out and convince the 55 that didn't vote yes that our arguments are solid, that our arguments about the Scottish economy are solid, that it's the best people to look after pensioners, the poor, etc., etc., etc. And I think that's what we have to do is reach out to these people who voted no. And again, you've touched on some of the ways we can do that by knocking doors, chapping doors, talking to people. And, and I think that's what we, we have to do to move this forward. Uh, I'm not convinced saying, nah, 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 we told you the Tories would tax you even more and make your poor people even poorer. And overall dying to say that every time they find a new oil field over the last month, it, it grates on you and drives you crazy, doesn't it? But the reality is, is, that, is that we need to get some of that 55 over. And I think the way to do that is, is to remind them of, of uh, how strong Scotland is, how strong an economy we've got, what the Scottish Government does for them. And for me, the, the referendum became a bit of a class war. Uh, it became of a sort of, for me, the, the middle classes and the pensioners, and I'm not generalising, I please, there's a few pensioners in here tonight, please don't shout at me. Uh, but many of the middle classes and many of the pensioners uh, voted no uh, in large numbers. And bizarrely enough, I think they've got most to lose from a no vote. Uh, the middle classes have got their free education to lose. Uh, Jim Murphy, as we all know, is a big advocate of uh, paid education. And I think we should be reminding many middle classes of that uh, since he's going to be the new Labour leader. So I think we have to remind the people who are part of the 55 the benefits of what the Scottish Government does for them, uh, embellish them, but at the same time uh, remind them uh, of the nasty things that the Labour Party are doing. And not just the Labour Party, in all fairness, but if you look at the, the devolution settlement that the Labour Party proposed, it's actually embarrassing. There is no new tax powers coming across whatsoever. And I don't think many no voters actually realise how poor their offering is. So for me, it's about knocking doors, about meeting people, educating them. As many people have said here tonight, educating people uh, and bringing some of that 55 back over to us. We don't need that many. Uh, but you're right, first point, win the general election campaign, win 16, and then kick on from there and see what we can do. Thanks. I think we've had some excellent points made tonight. Um, one point I'd like to raise is that we had a great turnout during the referendum, probably the highest turnout there's ever been in Britain for an election. Um, since then, we've had one council by-election in Scotland. That was in North Ayrshire. It was won successfully by the SNP candidate, but we had two. Sorry. Sorry, Ronnie, I've not been paying that close enough attention. I was only just, if I was walking the streets then, yeah, I was paying attention to it. Um, um, but what I was surprised about was the turnout for the vote. Um, a percentage, it was over 80% for the referendum, had dropped to 37%. What I think we all need to do is, now I know that one council by-election in one ward in North Ayrshire isn't a good indicator as to how people are vote, uh, going to vote or whether they're going to go to the polls in the future. But I think what we all need to do is keep people engaged, keep them encouraged, make sure they vote, make sure they get to the polling stations, make sure even if they register for a postal vote, just make sure they stay engaged and make sure they vote, and make sure they vote SNP especially in the run-up to the next election. Thanks. <laughs> One of the things that really um, I noticed was that this, the council policies for having nothing up to show that there's an election on is having an impact in these minor elections. There was absolutely nothing in Skelmerley to tell you there was an election going on that day. People who drove out first thing in the morning forgot it was an election, drove back in, and there was nothing up in the lamppost to show that there was an election going on. I think that is something that we really have to argue against. Um, I was in Spain at the time of the Euro elections, and it was amazing. The streets were festooned with banners, colour, everything. You felt, you know, the excitement of it. And I think the, in their case, it's something 70% turnout they get for elections. We're not getting that because we are deliberately depressing democracy and councils are complicit in that in the way that they are approaching it. So I think there could be a big campaign to get the visuals back out there whenever there is an election and that will help turn out. Ian Ramsey, Scottish Nationalist. I think what we must also campaign for is a complete overhaul 
of the electoral system. I remember we had five or seven recounts at a, at a, in this town uh, and a guy called Clocher to get in from the Labour Party. Seven recounts with seven different results through the night. In this modern day and age, surely to God we can learn to count. <laughs> but no, and he eventually get in with one vote. Most of us went home in disgust because the system is rotten. And at that last election, why didn't we just make it two different coloured papers? And you tear t t t up one and put, throw the red one down and keep the blue one or whatever the colour might be. And then there'd be no danger of it going into a different pile. It should say yes or no on it, but have a different colour scheme as well. And uh, people say, oh, some people are colour blind. Uh, well, Peter Ebden, the snooker player, might be colour blind, but... Uh, I don't think it, there's very few people like that. So let's let's get the system changed as well. I'm also the secretary of the Celtic League, the League of Celtic Nations, and we have written to the United Nations, appealing to them to do something democratic, or is there some sense that because we objected, but the British state are signatories to a treaty. For, uh, for civil rights. And they broke that by letting that Prime Minister, if you want to call him that, and Brun for the tune and, and his gang to come up and plead with us after the electoral, uh, the, the postal electoral votes were in. And they were allowed to come and, and speak to the people at the highest level over television and so on and so forth. Now there should be a cut, cut off period where you're not allowed to canvass for either side, say, 10 days before the election. Or to, uh, there is a rule anyway about that. And they, they, they broke that rule by doing that because it didn't give Alex Salmond or anybody the right to reply. And the result is that they were able to sway because there's no doubt about it. Yes, we're narrowly winning until they come up and, and did, did all those sob story promises. And another thing, the Greenock Telegraph, back in 2007, put in a big photograph of a, a document that had just been obtained from the collapsed Soviet Union. But don't forget, they're not collapsed. They're just renamed the Russian Federation. And it showed Greenock as the bullseye and a target for a nuclear attack. So let us start frightening our people that we are the bullseye and the attack for that base across the river. Let's start frightening the old age pensioners. Let's start frightening a whole bloody lot of them because we are the target for a nuclear attack from the Soviet, not the Soviet Union. They've changed their name. They're now the Russian Federation. And they've got to attack us because if America attacks them, then they've got to press the button here. So let's have a free Scotland, an independent Scotland, and one that is not growling to America or Britain or everything else. I've just had a, a notice in today about voting, and I have to fill in this big form. And do you see why you've got to send it back to the neighbouring country of England? There's something wrong there as well. Just on the point of two separate ballot papers, that would have been impossible because it would have done away with the privacy of the ballot box. Your, your vote's meant to be private and some people didn't, believe it or not, didn't want to discuss it. Um, private anyway. Well, according to Stephen McCabe on Twitter, they can just go and check you out, everything that you've ever voted for in your life anyway. Um, but we could, we're all going to bang our head against that brick wall for the next 10 years, going on about how hard done by we've been. We know we've been hard done by we knew it was going to come the british state doesn't do things above board i don't think the russians are actually as bad as they're painted out to me either can i just point that out i don't think the russians are coming to attack us and I, no I, I i get it i get it but i just i just think we need to not let it go that's fine but you're going to be you're go, you the reason that labor are performing badly is because they're consumed with the hate for the snp 
They don't have policies aside from disagree with the SNP and they've been utterly consumed by it. We are going to be consumed if we go running, 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 running about with this carry on. It may not have been fair, but it's done. It is done. And whether it was, regardless of whether there was rigging or whatever, they lied to people. So that in itself was not right. But we need to go over it. We really need feet on the ground. We've got eight months. If we spend eight months greeting about what happened last month or two months ago, we're not going to get very far. We really need a lot of feet on the ground to get around and get things done. Uh, does anyone object if I step in for a moment? All right, sure. Well, I, I, I should say that we are talking about uh, the Labour Party and how hard done by we are by the Labour Party, which is, you know, demonstrably true. And it's very, but it is very, very easy, I know myself, to get into the trap of basically stuff Labour because they're Labour, as it were. But it's also very easy to find things that are completely indefensible, in my view. Um, just a couple of weeks ago, I was researching the, I'm not going to stop ranting about this. Well, I'll not rant about it, but I shall discuss it. Um, in 2011 was the, uh, the series of votes which would lead to the Scotland Bill, which still isn't fully implemented, I might add, despite it being the Scotland Bill 2012. And there were 13 separate votes to allow uh, on whether certain issues should be devolved to the Scottish Parliament and two, where, whether some devolved powers should be repatriated to the UK Parliament. Now, you would think with 45 MPs from the supposed party of devolution, they would be mostly in favour of those. Yet there was not one Labour MP which voted mostly in favour of devolving more powers. 51% was the highest they got, according to the public WHIP website. And that's including some very generous interpretations of how uh, a certain vote was cast. Jim Murphy, in his very first parliamentary appearance, the first thing he talked about was the closure of the Coast Guard station in Inverclyde and how it was dis destroying the local community, how it's made the local community unsafe. In 2010, not a single Labour MP voted in favour of devolving the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency to Scotland. Do you think that that station would have been closed if it was devolved to the Scottish Parliament? Because I don't think it's a done deal that it would be. So this is a key, and every single pe person who did vote, not that many of them bothered to turn up to vote on any of those 13 issues, they're going to be running for office again. So those individuals need to be held to account because they've proven via vote that they're not going to fight for devolution. This isn't about voting them out because we hate them. This is about voting them out because they're not doing their jobs. Simple as that. Thank you. Um, just to make a point, further point, in Al Al's research, he included Katie Clark, who's my MP, because I just live over the border in Skelmerley, and she did no, not vote once on any of these things. Her voting record is blank for all devolution matters, yet she's standing as the deputy leader of the Labour Party at the moment. So, uh, in, mm -hmm. Yes, the most left-wing candidate, but her interest in de uh, devolution is absolutely zilch. Oh, Mary. Hiya, my name is Danny Morrison. Um, everybody knows that people, the reason, one of the main reasons why that referendum was lost was fear. You know, the, the pensioners were scared. And I also think that we were duped. They were duped. Whoever was duped, whoever voted, no was duped. Scotland's switched on now. The majority of people are switched on. And should it come again, and I don't hope it's next week, because it would just be chaos, after this 2015 election, and I do, I've, my family's right, my family's a Stonewall Labour family. They were, my mum and father were both councillors. I joined the SNP. Um, I hope the SNP do very, very well at the 2015 election. And I would hate to see... Uh, UKIP 
Tory alliance. I think it would be horrific. However, should that happen, that is when you need a yes alliance. That is when you need an SNP, an SSP, a Solidarity, whatever it may be, a Green Party. And that second vote in that Scottish election is absolutely critical because that could be what would then set another referendum in action. And I think there needs to be pressure put on the new leader, the SNP. There needs to be pressure put on her to say, well, if this happens, put it in the manifesto. Tell us you're going to do it and we'll correct that mistake. And I think, I'm telling you, I know I've said it on Facebook, <laughs> At my work, a lot of the women said what everybody they said. They hated Alex Salmond. I don't like him. But I reckon about a third of the people have actually said to me, I shouldn't have voted no. I should have voted yes. Now, even if some of them are lying, if half of them are telling the truth, and if you portray that across the whole of society, the next one's in the bag, providing everybody works together. These political parties may decide that they've got a lot to gain out of what's happening. They've got to work together if they're in genuinely in Scotland's needs. And can I just finish by saying that one of the good things about a referendum, food banks, everybody's aware of food banks. And Scotland's the country, sorry, Scotland's the country that just can't stop giving. We had a fantastic one in Greenock, 1.7 million 1.7, if only, 1.7 tonnes of, of food. And do you know what? If you had a Yes Alliance, why not have a day where you do the food bank? Would you give that information away? The Trussell Trust and that are going to help out, but you can, you can feel free to help them, but you can feel free to give that information away. People are getting switched on to poverty, and we've all got to stand together. And it is all about knocking on doors, but it, it is about the subtle things as well. My name's Bobby Birds, this day in Port Glasgow, and this Yes campaign's about winning friends and influencing people. That's what it's about. It doesn't matter about the Labour Party. The official Labour Party will always argue their point of view, but there's people in the Labour Party who will come to our point of view if we argue it properly. And I think one of the things that swayed quite a number of people was the blue book, the Wings Over Scotland, and I think we need an version of that uh, coming up to the the election next year and some of the points that's been raised here tonight about the bad points that the Labour Party supported, the good points that the SNP supported, I think that needs to be encapsulated in a, you know, a, wee ma a wee magazine or another book and maybe the SNP with their finances can take on board that and, and actually start to produce something and that's one of the ways to educate people uh, as far as we're going to argue with people because that's what we do all the time isn't it? This referendum comes up in all conversations, whether you're in the pub, you're in the shop. Or, uh, it, so it's an ongoing thing. And I think uh, to get the magazine will help us, particularly for the 2015 election. And it's a bit, no use of slagging the, the Labour Party totally, because there's a lot of good people in it. I was in it for 25 years, right? And there's a lot of good people who will be swayed with an argument. And that's what we've got to convince. And we've got to convince them with the argument. And I think when you see Murphy, and I hope he wins it, because he's a right-wing Torag, and, and people will recognise that. And we'll have to point that out. Right? So, 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 so that's the way forward. And I still drink the Labour Party people, but a lot of them voted yes. Right? So, but that's what I'm saying. Well, well, look, well look, it's about winning friends and influencing people. This is what the Yes campaign's about. Uh, and, and, and take scalps. And one of the scalps we need to take is Mackenzie in this town. And that'll send a signal. We bit of number crunching. Uh, the Labour majority in Inverclyde from 2010 to 2011 was slashed by 59%. Just saying, that's one year. Hi, uh, my name is Paul Malloy. 
few others not used to speaking in public like this, so apologies for the shaky voice. Um, a lot of passion here tonight. If you'd have heard my mother on the, fo the Skype from Montgomery, Alabama last night, you'd have seen passion. She'd have jumped through the bloody thing to say how she wanted to throttle a few people in America who were making comments about this election. But that's aside. Um, I'm also an engineer, and I'm very into organising and training and <coughs> things like that. There's a lot of disparate ideas, passion, you know, this, that. There's a wee bit of slagging there, and that's fine. <coughs> we do need to get organised, and I think that's where this conversation needs to move on. Now, the passion's there, fine. Bottle it, keep it, use it when you need it. Now we need to get organised, and I think that's what you're alluding to at the beginning. A um, couple of ideas. Um, I do a lot of work with schools, um, <coughs> and they have a thing called speed kind of career type things. So you could have a night, maybe in a couple of months' time, where you have little sections of the hall broken down to do mock canvassing, mock discussions, mock I don't know what, right? Come up with some different ideas. We all come along collectively as a group. We split into, say, three, four, five sections, and we have half an hour, 20 minutes in each of the areas. So you start to gain the different skill sets that are there. And these areas are staffed by people who have those skills. So you have people who have canvassed and have done the, you know, they've got the experience of what you are asked when you chart the door. It's part of interview training when you take someone and you say, right, how are you prepared for the interview? What do you mean? Well, you're going to be asked a softener question when you walk in and sit down. What are you currently working on? What are you currently doing? Be prepared for that have an answer to give them. Then they're going to get to the technical question. So think, what can they ask you? Prepare for it. And what happens then is, when people ask you the question, you don't go, uh, I don't know. You're ready. You have an answer. Now, it might not be the exact answer for the exact question, but it certainly should be something in that area that you can steer towards. And you will come across as an organized person who knows what they're talking about. And they're sort of going to go, ah, OK. They're more liable to believe you and listen to you than if you stand and go, oh, well, I don't know. Uh, you know. So that's where we need to get to. And again, not everybody here is going to have that skill set for standing on a door and doing the canvassing. But you might have another skill set. You might be able to make an argument, but in a more slow and controlled way. So maybe you should be the person who forms part of a group who actively responds to letters in the telegraph. Because maybe you're not good at thinking on your feet and talking at a door. But maybe you are good at writing down a structured letter and responding to a letter in the telegraph. And one example, and I'm, I'm probably out of date on this, but I started buying the telegraph just after the referendum to get the local news, the local what's going on. Someone wrote in <coughs> um, saying how they'd asked about the pension and how it was going to be paid. And the response from the SNP group was to give them the, the document, the white book. And they were like, so they looked it up, and the answer wasn't there. Now, that letter's been printed in the Telegraph, and it's a very negative response. I don't know, has that been responded to? I sure hope so, but I haven't had time to read all the Telegraph since then. Things like that, we need to make sure they don't go unanswered. We need to take the people who've got the skill set to do those responses. And maybe here there's four or five people who could do that. And they form a little group and we make sure it happens. But we need to get creative, like Ronnie says. We need to come up with ideas. The passion is there, all this about you know, what we did 20 years ago. It's what we do in the next eight months. And I think I'm over my three minutes, so thanks. <laughs> Just very quickly say the answer to pensions is on page 152 of the white paper. <laughs> yeah. But if I got you right there, you, you were actually volunteering to run the next. <laughs> Are you sure? Because we do need, we absolutely need training. We could touch the other on and we do need that. The skill sets have to be passed over. And when you're going to knock on doors, it's something you pick up on very quickly. But it, it's a terrific thing if we could get together. If you don't want to run it, somebody else can run it, but you can certainly contribute to it. Because we do need to absolutely the skill sets before, well before May, so that we get them and start kicking, uh, knocking doors. Okay.
I'll just say command, okay? Hi there. Uh, my name's Nick Laurie. Um, I just wanted to say, firstly, I agree with uh, the gentleman there, uh, Mr. McDougall, who said about um, we all need to come together. Um, sorry, am I in the way? Excuse me. Hi. We're in my five minutes of fame. Uh, uh, all right. No, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, I'm loath to quote him with my accent, but Churchill once said, um, in defeat, complete defiance, in victory, magnanimity. And paradoxically, it feels like the yes have in some ways won after this vote because uh, the polls are saying that Labour collapsing. There's not much talk of Labour collapsing. And I'd just like to say um, I think we should not um, harbour any ill feeling towards ex-Labour voters. And we should encourage them into the broad church, which is the, uh, the yes campaign and even the SNP. And that brings me to my th uh, second and final point, which is... Um, uh, there's a lot, been a lot of talk about Alex Salmond, and I think it's unfortunate, but he's out of the picture now. Um, I think he was great, but he was uh, identified a lot of the time as um, uh, a hate figure by no voters. But another thing I'd like to confront is uh, the word nationalism, and um, I'd, I think we have to confront this because it's not enough to just say we're a civic, inclusive nationalist movement. I think we have to bury into that why there's like almost an auto response amongst a lot of Scottish people. The minute they hear nationalist or national. SNP, they respond negatively. Um, I think we have to go into that. Why people are, um, well, you know, 200 countries in the world, no one questions their nationality, yet in Scotland we have to. We almost are embarrassed by it and feel we have to cringe, um, cringe factor with it. And uh, that's all I'd like to say. I'm sorry, I don't have any great ideas. <laughs> Aye, it's just really to touch on the, some of the points that was brought over there. I think one of the things that... You steal the microphone. Um, in the campaign, and it sort of really annoyed me, um, was we just seemed to take everything, and we were sort of directing this at the SNP people over there, is that we took all the crap. We never gave anything out. All we got was... Tories, Labour, Liberal, the No Campaign, the Orange Order, they just chucked, excuse the French, they chucked the shit at us. But we are all too nice that we sat and took it. Now, we should have come out and said, we should have come out and said, right, okay, you vote no, right, you're going to jeopardise free prescriptions, you're going to jeopardise this, you're going to jeopardise that. We never did any fighting back. We, we, were, we were too goody-goody, in, in my opinion. We just sat and took it all. And I think if we... If we we move forward, we've got to be a bit more aggressive, we've got to state our points and state, look, what, what's been achieved in Scotland by, by the parties, this, this could all go if we get a Labour back in in Scotland. I just think we've got to be more aggressive, more assertive and don't take it all, let's not be nicey nicey, let's start putting some stuff back forward again. Sorry, I, I, my, my name's Doc McKinley. Um, I've just got to challenge that because um, I've... <laughs> some of it, some of it. I, I've been, I left Scotland in the early 70s and spent my entire working life in England. I was a psychologist there. And when I came back to Scotland, it wasn't the Scotland I left. I mean, all the good bits were still there. But when I left, it was, you know... Oh, that's not bad, was high praise. <laughs> we were very negative, really. But when I came back, I couldn't believe what a positive country it is. Unbelievable. The, the young people are so confident and delightful and very able and not afraid to speak up for themselves. And that was certainly something that wasn't happening in my day. And I just want to congratulate everybody here because... That's something that has been achieved, and it's been achieved because you've had devolution. And <laughs> don't lose the positivity. I think that was what got the... I mean, Alex Salmon had set the whole thing up, and he deserves all sorts of praise for that. And to get 45% of the vote was unbelievable, and I think they did it through positivism. And... That is very, very strong. And as a therapist, I know that 
on a journey to change behavior is very difficult. And before you get to your goal, you have to sometimes step back and then people are able to move forward further. And that, I think, although we lost the referendum, I don't think we've lost the journey. And, you know, we take the positive messages that have helped get where we are and build on them because they have been fantastic. And I heard a quote recently, it was Mahatma Gandhi, so <laughs> if it's not too grandiose, but I thought it was, it was a terrific thing. And it was, what is it, first, first they ignore you, then they mock you, then they fight you, then you win. And I think we should remember that. I'm going to bother you again. Okay, yes, Haddington, if you haven't looked at their page on Facebook, fantastic little group. They have actually come up with some really, really great ideas. A, I think we need a resource point again because um, we had the Yes shop. We've lost, that's now gone, I'm assuming. We need a point where we can go to get our badges, get our references, like a little book, magazine that can be done monthly if possible because um, one of the things I hate about UKIP and I really loathe them, is they use polit popular politics, which means a monthly change of inference. They might not do anything, but they actually do use what's popular in the, pub in the public realm at this moment. So why can't we use that for our benefit? What's popular in Inverclyde at this moment? We could put that in magazines. Um, Vries Haddington actually has a stall every Saturday, and they have a sandwich board out the front, which actually says what is of interest to the local community at that time. So gets people talking, gets people walking up to the, the little group and actually bringing up ideas. They also have a lovely little page which says, I voted no or yes for these reasons, or I've changed my mind for this reason. We can actually use that for our advantage, get people starting to talk. Some people don't like to talk, but some people don't mind writing. Let's use this for our advantage, but I think we need a resource point to be able to come to. Me again, just to say, try to defend myself here from that poor moon. I'm not your enemy, but to me, Labour as a party has been my enemy all my adult life. And all I'm saying is, be very careful. They've changed and they squirm and they have done so much and fooled the people of Scotland in this town alone for nearly over 90 years. They've been in power and look at the state of Greenock. Look at the state of Inverclyde, absolute disgrace. And all they've done is line their pockets and they still have, I have somebody that turned around to a friend who's a yes voter, her father, who's a rebel man, who sang all the Irish rebel songs, turned around and said to her the other day, SMP popery, uh, no popery. Now, I have been in the SNP for all my life, and most of my friends, Catholic Protestants, it's never been about no popery or no home rule, pope rule, or all this nonsense that these people of years and years keep saying. So we've got a fight ahead of us, and all I'm saying to a lot of people, there's a lot of Labour people out there that believe we are, they do, it's called divide and rule. So I'm just defending myself. I do not hate Labour people, per se, but I hate the Labour with a passion. I hate them so much so that I don't think I'm going to go to heaven at this rate. I can't stand the Labour Party. I can't stand their arrogance. So then that, and I'm not going to go back on that. So I don't, individually, I don't hate anybody, but them as a party and their arrogance in this town, how they used to laugh at us and how they laugh, the whole, the, the whole Westminster establishment, I can't stand. But the other thing about that, I don't know what your name is, sorry. You said something about the Yes campaign getting together. Yes, I'm all for all us yeses. But the reason why the SNP won in the 2011 election, well, 2007 first, and then it became, they got a big vote is because they told, I, was a, I am a member of SNP. They told everybody to vote, both votes or SNP. Both votes, they said, and that is what, and that is how, but that is how we, bec no, but, the, but this, I'm saying in 2011, we, we, 
we won the election by quite a big majority. All I'm saying is we do want to split. We don't want to split our vote. I do agree that you... Uh, that sounded very emotional, and I don't think hatred is a word that, that we, we should be. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I know exactly. I know how you feel, and I know what you mean. Yeah, we could hate, we could hate policies, but it's men, but it is people that we're dealing with, and it's people that we must convince as well. So that's just an aside. At the moment, what I wanted to say as, by, by the way, my name's Jerry. I'm from Port Glasgow, but as an Inverclyder and one not engaged with politics before the referendum. I wanted to say that I would probably identify mo more with, it, with the guy that Ronnie met at the door and says, this politics is a load of shit, you know? That's what I would have said. However, experience and the passion that, uh, and the ideas, and when I first watched uh, Mrs. Sturgeon giving, an, uh, giving a lecture on, uh, on, the, on, the, on the ideas of independence, I thought, she, I mean, it was amazing. I was amazed and I said, this could work. This is true. This is possible. I was excited and uh, I've been excited ever since. It's been a life-changing experience, to be honest with you. And uh, that is what we've got to bring to people. It's hope. It's hope in a better Inverclyde. Uh, I think I might be stopped there. I'm on a good one. <laughs> Hello? Ah, we're good to go. Uh, I would just like to say that, yes, Inverclyde is not the SNP. That we are completely separate. There are some of us that are SNP and there's some of us that are SSP and the Scottish Greens and whatever else and we want to remain that way. We are not going down the road of the yes NP just solely as that. There, there is, it is cross party and we're not going to alienate anybody. We want independence. We don't want just the power for one party. Um, and also to just press forward, we we need to move forward, we need to start converting people, we need to just keep on going as if the referendum never happened. So we do need a cross party, it's not just all about us. We do need to, in this area, it's probably going to be the SNP candidate that is going to be stand the best chance, so that's fair enough. But we, yes, Inverclyde is not the SNP, I just want to point that out. I'll just give a wee plug for Women for Indy while, while Jen was talking in the same kind of thing because, uh, again, it is a wide organisation taking in all sorts of people. We've already had one very, very busy meeting in Inverclyde. Our second one is at the Dockers on the 19th and everybody is welcome. Um, if you fancy signing up for it tonight, I'll give you a wee card and give me your email address and we'll link in with you. Already we're thinking in terms of organising by wards. Um, <laughs> Not really. We, we know we have a problem. We know that women were not as in favour of it as men, and we know we do have a problem. We're trying to address that, and I think that really is our main motivation. But we're already thinking of organising ourselves into wards so that we've got strong teams in each ward for the next time we have to swing into action. That's one of our, our, our aims. But anybody who wants to sign up, just come and see me. I'll give you a card, fill in your email address, and that's you. That's all you have to do. Hello, my name is Drew McKenzie. Uh, I think that the referendum campaign will be something that each and every one of us will look back on with a, a great sense of pride, a great sense of achievement that we were part of such a, a movement. We managed to raise the spirits of Scotland uh, so much and we got within a, a whisker of uh, achieving our our aim. It, it was just such a fantastic feeling and the despair that we felt that day, uh, the day after the referendum when the result was, was obvious, uh, it was something that we shared as, as a group. 
Now we think, where do we go from here? People are shouting for another referendum. We can hope that there's one in the offing soon. But when we were fighting the cause, we said that it would be a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, it would be a once-in-a-generation. Perhaps that's not the case now. Who could ever foreseen what has happened in Scottish politics over the last wee while? Who would ever foreseen that we would have lost the referendum and come out so strong and the Labour Party would be in such so, so turmoil now. Uh, this is what we've got to go forward on. It's so unpredictable. Not one political commentator could have called what had happened. And not one political commentator can call what's going to happen within the next year with the general election. We would like another referendum, but the appetite in the street is not there for it. Uh, the people have been festered with it for the last two years. And... They want our elected politicians now to go and do what they're paid to do. And that is work for their money and represent the people of Scotland. And as a yes movement, what we've got to do is work hard with all this newfound enthusiasm with the pe people with the feet on the ground and work hard and get elected and into every office, starting with Westminster, then getting another majority in, the, in Holyrood and then winning control of as many local authorities as possible. And if we do that, then we can bring the people on. Do you know, there's four reasons for voting no. Four reasons. Fear, ignorance, selfishness and bigotry. <laughs> and these are, these are the four things that we have to address. Those that were fearful, we must allay their fears by good governance. Show them that we can be responsible and run the country well. For those that were ignorant, who took their information from the mainstream media and from the BBC, we've got to tell them that, that is not the case and these are the facts. To those that were selfish, probably the best thing we can do with them is get down beside them and pray along with them. Pray that they never lose their jobs. Pray that they never go sick. But perhaps we could educate them. Perhaps we could educate them by telling them that if you help the bottom rung of society, the top rung of society benefits from it also. <laughs> and to the bigots, to the bigots who amply demonstrated their feelings in George Square on the 19th of September, to these people we say with one voice, there is no place in a modern Scotland for attitudes and behaviour such as that. <laughs> we must go forward in an all-encompassing mode. There is now no, no longer a yes camp and a no camp. It is one body. And we must go forward as that, but we must not take our eye off the prize. As the First Minister said yesterday, the destination has been set. We're just working in the timetable. It's not, it's not a case of if. It's still a matter of when. As we go forward, that is our prize. We think of the despair that day of the 19th of September. We think back to the emotions, the tears welling up in our behind their eyes all day. The demand for solitude. No one to read the newspapers, no one to watch the television, want to just be alone. And you all shared that same feeling. That's a feeling that we'll carry with us for a long time. But on the 19th of September, many people said that that was the end. You and I know, ladies and gentlemen, that was only the beginning. Thank you. Is that working okay, yeah? Um, I'm not great at public speaking either. I'm better doing like your one-to-one -one and doing burrowing in the background delivering leaflets. That, but the important thing for me listening to the debate tonight and what I got over the campaign is simply that we've got to work together. Politically, I've been a member of the SNP since 1992. The referendum has found me wondering where I go in my politics now, whether I stay with the SNP or whether I move to another party that's got an independence agenda. 
and it's something that I never thought I would think I'd be looking at. But having looked through the referendum and watched and listened to what people have said there uh, the next couple of months, I've got to give a lot of thought. Um, but I'm still going to be part of the independence referendum, and that's why it's important to me that we work together, whether it be SSP, the Greens, the SNP. We don't attack people that are Labour Party supporters at the moment. We've got to get them on side. That's very, very important. If we harangue people, they're going to continue to vote no. I'm a trade union steward. I've uh, been a Unison steward for about 10 years now, and I was surprised in the run-up to the referendum how strong the yes support is within the Unison union as well. The union was a, a neutral stance in the campaign, but speaking to people that are activists in unison as well, the surprising thing was how many were actually yes. Um, being at national council meetings and being able to see that, that opinion there, and it's something we've got to get in amongst the trade unions as well, especially the ones that were voting no, and make sure that we get some support in there. And I think locally we need to make sure, as I say, without trying to repeat myself, is basically we've got to work together and make sure that we move forward. Um, I'm just going to make one quick point, guys. Last week, myself and the Inverclyde branch of the Scottish Socialist Party, we went to a party conference, and our members unanimously passed the bill to support a Yes Alliance in 2015. Um, let's say there's a lot of reasons why we didn't win the referendum, but moving forward, we try to get people to come to our side, but the SSP are hoping to form an alliance with the Greens, with the SNP, and try and get rid of the Red Tories. And then um, Ben and John are up the back during the break if anyone wants to go and find out more about the Scottish Socialist Party. Thank you. Okay, just to summarise what we've achieved over this evening, we've got about seven bullet points written down here, things we're going to take on board, go away, discuss it, invite you to think about them as well and come back to us with our ideas. We have recognised, continue to recognise, we need to on between different groups. Uh, we would love to have the central resource point. Uh, the Yes shop, which we ran very successfully in Kithkarsi, was roughly costing us about £1,000 a month to run. £700 of that was rent. Um, it's now being used as something else, I think the shop, shop's been taken over. Uh, but £1,000, we had it for two months, uh, and it, it ultimately it paid for itself. But if we'd known how successful it was going to be, we could have started it three, four months out, and that would have been great. But having that shop like that up and running is would be fantastic. I know some other areas of, of mine to continue to do so. I think the closest one is probably Largs. It's funded up until after the election in May. Uh, we lend them things. They, they, they run their shop, we lend them badge machines and printers and people and so something's wrong there. Uh, education, absolutely, Paul. Uh, we need to organise education sessions, including canvassing sessions. They take a long time to organise and set up, but if you've got an appetite for it, then absolutely we will do that for you. It will take some time for us to get our head around exactly what we're going to do, and then we'll advertise it, and we'll get feedback from as to how many people actually want to partake in it. But it's, it's something we've been thought about in the past. If you've got the appetite, we will provide it. We're looking at connection with the, 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 the food banks locally. We've already been involved in that locally. We don't want to, to politicise them as much, but obviously it's a community thing, and we want to be part of the community, and we'll continue to be part of the community. We Blue Book for the general election would be absolutely staggering. If you want to talk to the Reverend Stuart Campbell and see if he's up for it, that would be, be great. I doubt it, because he's not a member of the SNP, but if it's going to be something for the general election and there's a Yes Alliance on the, on the go, the We Blue Book was a real bonus to us in the last five weeks or so that we had it, it converted people, as far as possible, almost every single person that took the time to read it came over to the Yes Camp. And finally, and maybe what we've, we've all touched on today, is we have to keep a case for continuing positivity. We have to keep on working at it, we have to keep on working together, talking to each other, and that's ultimately the path they're on and the goal we're looking for.